Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. We are interested in the sum n from minus infinity to infinity of e to the minus pi n squared over five. We start by the following Fourier transform, the continuous time Fourier transform of the function e to the minus e to the i theta t squared, where theta is between minus pi over two and pi over two. Using contour integration, we can show that this is square root pi e to the minus i theta over two, then e to the minus e to the minus i theta pi squared f squared. Let's replace t by t times square root pi r. R is a positive real number. We are doing scaling. According to the scaling rules of the continuous time Fourier transform, we need to divide by this. And then we also need to replace f by f divided by square root pi r. This can be simplified as 1 over square root r e to the minus i theta over 2 e to the minus i 1 over r e to the minus i theta f squared. This expression here. Now we have a Fourier transform pair. Let's apply the Poisson summation formula. If g of t has a continuous time Fourier transform, big G of f, then summation g of n, where n is an integer, is equal to summation of big G of n, where n is an integer. So let's do here. We will take this and replace t by n. And we do the same here. We replace f by n to get the other side. If we set theta equal to 0 and r equal to 1 fifth, this side becomes summation n from minus infinity to infinity e to the minus pi n squared over 5. That's actually the sum of interest. This term becomes the square root of 5. And this summation is summation n from minus infinity to infinity e to the minus 5 pi n squared. Thus, this summation here is 1 over square root 5 times this summation. Let's write this sum as two sums. In the first one, 5 divides n. So these are the terms in this sum where small n is a multiple of 5. And then another sum in which 5 does not divide n. So here in this sum, n is not a multiple of 5. This sum here has the terms n equal to 0, plus or minus 5, plus or minus 10, and so forth. We can rewrite this summation as summation n from minus infinity to infinity, and we replace this n here by 5n. This becomes summation n from minus infinity to infinity, e to the minus 5 pi n squared. Using the Poisson summation formula, this summation is 1 over square root 5, this sum. Now, this sum can be written as this summation, which is like the left-hand side, plus the summation in which n is not divisible by 5. We can move this to the other side. We can multiply both sides by the square root of 5. So this summation with 5 not dividing n is square root 5 minus 1 times this summation. And this summation is 1 over square root 5 times the sum of interest. Thus, this summation of e to the minus pi n squared over 5, where n is not divisible by 5, is 1 minus 1 over the square root of 5 times the sum of interest. Let's go back here to this equality derived using the Poisson summation formula. Apply Euler everywhere. e to the i theta is cosine theta plus i sine theta. e to the minus i theta over 2, that's cosine theta over 2 minus i sine theta over 2. Finally, we have e to the minus i theta is cosine theta minus i sine theta. The sum here can be written as e to the minus pi r n squared cosine theta e to the minus i pi r n squared sine theta. Using Euler, this is cosine pi r n squared sine theta minus i sine pi r n squared sine theta. We do the same here in this other sum. We will get just a plus sum. Take the real part of both sides. If we do this on the left-hand side, we end up with summation n from minus infinity to infinity e to the minus pi r n squared cosine theta and then cosine pi r n squared sine theta. Now, on the right-hand side, we have this is a complex quantity, and this is a complex quantity. So the real part will come from this times this. And there will be another term in which we take this sine theta over 2 times sine pi over r n squared sine theta. We have one term on the left-hand side, and we have two terms on the right-hand side. Let's now make a strategic selection of the values of theta and r. Let's look here. We have sine pi over r n squared sine theta. If sine theta divided by r is equal to 2. This is sine 2 pi n squared. Sine 2 pi times an integer, that's 0. And this summation here goes away. Also, this cosine here, we have sine theta over r. If it's 2, then this is cosine 2 pi n squared. That's 1. The right-hand side is simplified to 1 over square root r cosine theta over 2. And then we have just a single sum e to the minus pi over r n squared cosine theta. Let's try to make this sum something that we already know. If we choose cosine theta divided by r to be equal to 1, this summation is summation n from minus infinity to infinity, e to the minus pi n squared. There is another video dedicated to this sum. It is equal to gamma of 1 over 4 divided by 2 to the 1 half 
times pi to the power 3 over 4. By choosing cosine theta over r to be 1, we now know what this summation is. Sine theta over r is chosen to be 2, so that this is 0 and this is 1. So sine theta over r is 2. Now we are saying let cosine theta over r be equal to 1. By doing this, this becomes a known summation. If we have these two relations, then sine squared theta is 4r squared, and cosine squared theta is equal to r squared, sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta, that's unity, is equal to 5r squared. In this case, r is 1 over square root 5. If r is 1 over square root 5, then cosine theta is 1 over square root 5, and sine theta is 2 over square root 5. If we take the values of r, cosine theta, and sine theta, and use them, so here, this r is 1 over square root 5, this cosine theta is another 1 over square root 5. This is e to the minus pi n squared divided by 5. This is exactly the term that we have in the summation of interest. However, there is an extra cosine here. Our summation is not just the exponential, but the exponential times cosine 2 pi over 5 times n squared. This is the situation on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we now know this summation r to the minus 1 over 2 becomes 5 to the power 1 over 4. Cosine theta over 2 is the square root of 1 plus cosine theta divided by 2. What we get is this summation here is equal to 5 to the power 1 over 4. Then applying this, we have square root 1 plus 1 over square root 5 because cosine theta is 1 over square root 5 divided by 2. And then we have this summation that we already know. Let's think about this cosine. If n is a multiple of 5, then we have cosine 2 pi divided by 5. Then if n is like 5m, this is 25 times m squared. That's cosine 2 pi, 5m squared, 2 pi times an integer. That's 1. Whenever n is divisible by 5, this cosine is 1. And we get this summation, n from minus infinity to infinity, e to the minus pi 5n squared. Note that if n is not a multiple of 5, it can be written as 5k plus r, where r is plus or minus 1 or plus or minus 2. n squared is 25k squared plus 10kr plus r squared. This cosine becomes cosine of 2 pi times 5k squared plus 2 pi times 2kr plus 2 pi r squared divided by 5. This is an integer multiple of 2 pi. This is an integer multiple of 2 pi. So this is cosine 2 pi over 5 r squared. If r is plus or minus 1, then this is cosine 2 pi over 5. If n is plus or minus 2 modulo 5, then r is plus or minus 2 r squared is 4, so this is cosine 8 pi over 5. Well, cosine 8 pi over 5 is equal to cosine 2 pi over 5. This means that if 5 does not divide n, then this cosine is cosine 2 pi over 5. We can take it outside, and now we have a summation in which n is not a multiple of 5. We have already prepared the ground for the emergence of this quantity here. We have that the summation of e to the minus pi n squared over 5, if the index n is not a multiple of 5, is this factor times our summation of interest. Let's go back here. This is 1 over square root 5 times the sum of interest. And then this summation is 1 minus 1 over square root 5 times the sum of interest. And then cosine 2 pi over 5, that's square root 5 minus 1 over 4. This is a standard trigonometric value. Let's drive it real quick. Sine 2 pi over 5, sine double the angle, that's 2, sine pi over 5, cosine pi over 5. Sine 2 pi over 5 is also sine 3 pi over 5. That's sine triple the angle. This is equal to 3 sine pi over 5 minus 4 sine cubed pi over 5. Divide both sides by sine pi over 5. 2 cosine pi over 5 is 3 minus 4 sine squared pi over 5, which can be written as 1 minus cosine squared pi over 5. We can rewrite this as the quadratic equation. 4 cosine squared pi over 5 minus 2 cosine pi over 5 minus 1 is equal to 0. Cosine pi over 5 is 2 plus square root 20 divided by 8. That's 1 plus square root 5 divided by 4. Finally, cosine 2 pi over 5, which is the quantity of interest, is 2 times the square of this quantity, which is 6 plus 2 square root 5 divided by 16 minus 1. And this gives us square root 5 minus 1 divided by 4. We are done. We can write down this as the summation of interest, this factor here, square root 5 minus 1 divided by 2. Don't forget that the other side is already known. We just divide by this factor to obtain our summation of interest. If this is divided by square root 5, we also get this sum, summation n from minus infinity to infinity, e to the minus 5 pi n squared.